Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last <laughs> drop. That drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House coffee time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Toby Reed, Gail Gordon, Hans Conried, Elliot Lewis, B. Benaderet, Frank Nelson, Meredith Wilson, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night's comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> years ago, George put his name on the waiting list for a new car, and at long last, that glorious moment has arrived. Gracie, the man from the automobile agency just called. A trainload of new cars arrived from Detroit, and we get one of them. Oh, wonderful. At last, we'll have something newer than Joe and Clara Bagley. Clara's always rubbing it in that my things are older than hers. Well, she's right. Your refrigerator is older. Your vacuum sweeper is older. Well, even my dishwasher is older. But, Gracie... I wash the dishes. I know. <laughs> well, grab your hat, honey, and let's go and get that new car. I can't wait to drive by the Bagley's house and show it off. Oh, let me do it, George. I'll drive right into their living room. You can't do that. Well, why not? I drove into our living room once. It's much smaller than this. I know, I remember that, yes. Well, let's go and get the new car. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Burns. Your name's at the top of the list. And your new car is out in the service department now being checked over. Well, what'll it cost us? Oh, just the list price, Mr. Burns. We don't accept bonuses. Oh, that's fine. Now, let's see. List price on your car is $1,750. Okay. With the extras, it comes to $3,400. $3,400? What extras? Why, extra equipment that every car needs. Things like a compass and barometer, a radar detector, Venetian blinds at all the windows. Now, wait a minute. If you... Built-in chrome-plated cuspidor. <laughs> what do I want with a cuspidor? We well, sure you can use the regular door. <laughs> Greatly. And then there's the dashboard television set. I, I can't look at a television and drive an automobile. I see you're not a native Californian. <laughs> now, look, uh, then there's the silver-plated fog lights that go on the front of the motor. We don't need that stuff. Well, certainly not. You can just leave the motor off. <laughs> look, mister, I'm not going to take all those extras. You're not, huh? But what do you know? I've been holding the list upside down. Your name's on the bottom. <laughs> I'll pay anything to get a new car before Joe Bagley gets one. When will the car be ready? About an hour. They're just installing the garbage disposal unit. <laughs> Couldn't live without it. Well, I've got a meeting at the office, Gracie. Here's enough money for a down payment. When the car is ready, drive it home and put it in the and put it in the garage. All right, dear. Put that in the garage, and I couldn't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> But for heaven's sake, drive carefully. Keep your hands on the wheel. Your foot on the brake. Your mouth closed. Your ears open and your eyes on the road. Uh -huh. Is it all right if my nose just hangs there and rests? <laughs> I'll see you at home. Uh. Meantime, George's arch rival, Joe Bagley, is hearing the news at Pop Cigar Store. You mean to say George is getting a new car before I get mine? Yeah, yeah. Gracie's waiting down to the auto place right now to drive it home. <laughs> Darn it. I'd give anything to get my hands on that new car. Well, now I'll sell you my car, Mr. Bangley. It's as good as new. Latest model made. Latest model what? Stutz Bearcat, 1918. <laughs> Got a raccoon tail on the radiator cap. Oh, Pop, 
Well, nobody would be dumb enough to buy a 1918 Sutch Bearcat. It's not... Wait a minute. Gracie would. Yeah, that's it. Pops, I think I'm going to wind up with George's new car. How much do you want for your Sutch? Well, now it's in A1 condition. How much? Auto prices are sky high right now. How much? Got to make a little profit on it. How much? $25. (laughs) All right, here's your money. Where's the car? Parked down in front. Now, you be careful when you get into it, Joe. Don't sit on my ukulele. (laughs) Well, Joe Bagley, how nice to see you. Did you come in here to buy a new car? No, Gracie. I heard that you were getting one, so I came by to push it home for you. Push it? One of one? Gracie, you're an intelligent woman. Figure it out for yourself. Where are the new cars made? Detroit. How do they get them out here? On the train. If they run, why bring them out on the train? Oh, oh, you're right. (laughs) I, I never thought of that. My goodness, every time I wanted to go somewhere, I'd have to put it on the train. Exactly. It's hard enough to find parking space for a car, let alone a train. Sure. Now, there's no two ways about it, Gracie. They just don't build good cars anymore. In fact, the last really good car was made in 1918. 1918? There was a vintage year. They built 30 dependable cars. But where could I find an automobile that was made in 1918? It was 20 years ago. (laughs) 30. No, 20. I know because that's the year I was born and I'm 20. (laughs) My mistake. (laughs) But getting back to 1918 cars, I'm afraid I have the only one in town. There it is, parked out in front. Well, I don't see it, Joe. Is it behind that concrete mixer? That's the car. Oh. Ah, they don't make them like that anymore. I didn't know they ever did. That's a genuine stuck bearcat made of the finest steel smelted in Pittsburgh. There's a car that'll run a million miles. Really? It did it once, it can do it again. And what a historical background that car has got. It was built in 1918, the year of the armistice. When the Kaiser was defeated, General Blackjack Pershing rode triumphantly down Fifth Avenue in that dust. Oh, yes. I I, I don't suppose you'd want to sell it, huh? Gracie would be like selling my own wife. Yeah. They do look a little alike. Darned if they don't. <laughs> All right, Gracie, you can have it. Oh, thank you, Joe. You're making a great sacrifice. How much is it? You couldn't possibly pay what it's worth, so take it for nothing. Just give me $25 to transfer the ownership. Then I'll give you my white slip. Oh, no, the car's enough. I won't take your underwear. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me, Mrs. Bird. Yes? Your new car won't be ready until tomorrow morning. We're removing the speedometer to make room for a mix master. <laughs> Here's the priority, which will entitle you to the car when it's ready. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, the mister... Oh, dear. Oh. Will he be mad if I don't take the new car? Yes, he will. Gracie, I'll carry my sacrifice even further and buy it myself. Oh, Joe, you should. In friendship's name, I'll do it. I'm a skilled mechanic. I can probably make it run. Oh, George, I'll never forget you for this. Here's the priority for your car. Thank you. Here's the crank for yours. <laughs> oh, boy. I can hardly wait to look in the garage and see my new car. I hope Gracie got it home all right. Yeah, there. Oh, no, she had a wreck. <laughs> I'll never see her again. Nobody could be in a wreck like that and live. Oh, well, how do you like it? Gracie, thank goodness you weren't killed in the accident. What accident? 
Didn't you hit something when you drove the car home? No, no, I was very careful. I didn't even hit my front fender when it fell off. <laughs> Tracy, where'd you get this car? From Joe Bagley. Joe Bagley? Yes, he took the priority for our new car and sold me this one. This pile of junk? Junk? Well, I'll have you know this is a genuine Dutch polka. <laughs> what? They smelled it clear in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Uh, and it has a historical background, too. In this car, General Person defeated Henry Kaiser in a game of blackjack. <laughs> this is murder. Howdy, folks. Oh, hello, Mr. Judson. Hi, Tex. I-, I was passing by and seeing you out here in the garage. See, uh... <laughs> See ma'am, where'd you get the old relic? I met him in Vaudeville. <laughs> means the stuck. Yeah, I know, dear. I was just joking to cheer you up. Well, I'm very happy. <laughs> Mr. Judson, look at this car that Joe Bagley stole great. Car? Why, it looks more like the covered wagon my great-grandpappy had when he founded the city of Dallas. He founded it? Yep. Who lost it? <laughs> Who lost it? <laughs> oh, I like your sense of humor, man. <laughs> No, no, come to think of it, I ain't leaving yet. <laughs> Good, because I want to tell you what else Bagley did. He talked Gracie out of my priority for a new car. Well, now that's a real mean trick. A man who'd do that would feed California oranges to a Texas hog. <laughs> you, you come on, little man. You and me's going over to Joe Bagley's and force him to give you back your priority. Good. <laughs> Hello, George. Listen, Joe. Either you take that old dust and give me my priority, or Mr. Judson here is going to beat you up. That's right, Bagley. Anyone who cheats the friend of a Texan is in for a licking. Texan. Say, what part of Texas you're from, partner? Dallas. Why? Well, I'm a Fort Worth boy myself. Huh? You tell. <laughs> So you're a Texan. Why, George? My pappy's got seven oil wells. Oh, I- I'm awful sorry to hear your family's on really. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mr. Judson, you came over here to whip him. What did you say, Yankee? <laughs> this man cheated me. Why, you falsifying little weasel. <laughs> I'd skin you alive if I was sure that you was. <laughs> if you were sure that it... <laughs> oh, I like your sense of humor, partner. <laughs> Taking those great Gershwin melodies, Meredith. It's the music of America's most famous composer. Gershwin earned that title, Toby. He was an absolute perfectionist. He'd work round the clock till a melody was set just right. Then he worked just as hard on the harmony or a tricky rhythm effect. And when he'd put them all together, another great hit was born. Right. Gershwin might have worked like mad on the different parts of the song, but he never lost sight of the complete musical result. Here's one of his songs all America knows by heart but try to recognize it from just his mellow harmony. Or now, with this rich counter melody added. Oh, 
Well, both themes are wonderful, Meredith, but we need more. All right, Toby, then we'll add the vigorous rhythm. And now we'll blend in George Gershwin's melody and complete this favorite of favorites. the beautiful and popular The Man I Love. Friends, you see how America's favorite songs demand the expert blending of many perfect orchestral parts? Well, it's the same way with the creation of America's favorite brand of coffee, Maxwell House. Not one, but many varieties of choice highland-grown Latin American coffees must be blended to achieve the satisfying, good-to-the-last-drop flavor of Maxwell House. Our Maxwell House experts, with careful skill, select Manizales for mellowness. For richness, they add Medellin. For vigor, they select other choice coffees. For fine, full body, they add Bucaramanga. All blended in one great coffee, radiant roasted to flavor perfection, and brought to you vacuum packed and roaster fresh. Tomorrow, discover the extra flavor, extra satisfaction of America's favorite brand of coffee. Discover why now, more than ever, all this extra flavor and satisfaction makes Maxwell House today's outstanding coffee buy. Tomorrow, ask for Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Bagley's going to get my new car, and I'm stuck with a 1918 Stutz bed. Oh, now, George, stop worrying. With a raccoon tail yet. <laughs> I got you into this, and I'll get you out. Got any ideas? Oh, I've got so many ideas in my brain, I can just rattle them off. You're talking to a real rattle brain. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound right, did it? Did to me. <laughs> well, I'll go over and see if Bill Goodwin can help me. I'll see you later, dear. Well, Gracie, you've gotten your husband into a mess. I know it. You ought to be ashamed. I am. <laughs> You're beautiful but dumb. I'm not dumb. <laughs> well, how are you going to get that priority back from Joe Bagley? I could get it back if I went over and told his wife, Clara, a few lies. Gracie! <laughs> you wouldn't lie. <laughs> oh, you don't know me very well, do you? <laughs> I'm glad you dropped by, Gracie. I want to thank you for giving Joe this priority for a new car. Oh, that's all right, Clara. Just give me half the bobby pins you find in it. Bobby pins? Mm hmm. Gracie, are you insinuating that Joe might pick up girls? Oh, no, no, no. It's just that girls can't resist the new cars. Why, when one drives by, they all hop on it. They do? Sure, haven't you heard of a car hop? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but Gracie... Oh, not... now, there's nothing to worry about, Clara. They're mostly young college girls around 18 and 19 with sweaters and short skirts. Oh, but Gracie, those college girl flirtations are harmless. Oh, of course. Why, I was a college girl the first time Joe dated me. I remember we just got in his car and drove to the beach and... I'll kill him. <laughs> if that worm tries to buy a new car, I'll kill him. Oh, yeah. You're being smart, Clara. When a man gets a new car, his wife becomes a gas widow. <laughs> Here, Gracie, you take the priority. Even in a new car, your husband is safe. <laughs> and a 
for Joe, I'll get him the oldest, most broken-down car in the world. Well, there it is, parked in your driveway. Goodbye, Clara. <laughs> Meantime, George has gone to seek help from his friend, Bill Goodwin. We find him now in Bill's apartment. So that's the story, Bill. Bagley gets my new car tomorrow morning, and I'm stuck with a 1918 Stutt Spare Well, gee, I don't know how I can help you, George, with a raccoon tail yet. <laughs> well, I might buy the old Bearcat from you. I'll give you $10 for it. Thanks, Bill. But you wouldn't want it. You'd uh, get a girl and drive out on some lonely road and... The darn thing would stop on you. <laughs> Give you a hundred dollars for it. <laughs> Bill, it hardly runs. It's got no pickup at all. I'll provide the pickup. <laughs> It'll be loaded with dames in no time. I doubt it, Bill. Looks like a tin can. You know something better to fill with tomatoes? <laughs> Okay, come on over to the house and you can have a look at it. Well, ring for the elevator while I grab my hat. Okay. Here's the elevator, Bill. Well, look who's here. Professor Korkendorfer. Somebody spoke? <laughs> yeah. Can't you, uh, can't you see us? Of course I see you. I got ice like a house. <laughs> You're a very slow waitress. <laughs> Waitresses? I've been here in the coffee shop 15 minutes and no one has taken my order yet. <laughs> Why didn't they cook it? <laughs> I, I, I'm so hungry, my stomach keeps going up and down. Professor, this is the elevator. Oh, I'm Bill Goodwin, and this is my boss. Glad to meet you, Mrs. Godwin. <laughs> I'm George Burns. You should get glasses, Professor. Who needs glasses? I got uh, eyes like a hawk. <laughs> my wife had eyes like a hawk. Wouldn't be stuck with that bear cat. Bear cat? Yeah. She bought a stuck bear cat with a raccoon tail yet. Why, that's priceless. For that, I would pay $2,000. $2,000? Sure, to add to my collection. Oh, boy. This will turn Joe Bagley green. Professor, I could kiss you. That'll turn him green. <laughs> Come on, let's go home and, and get the bag back. Well, hello, Bill. Hi, Daisy. Oh, hello, Professor Cockendorfer. Somebody spoke? <laughs> Gracie, I've got wonderful news. Oh, no. Let me tell my wonderful news but first. This is... No. I got back the car priority and sold the stuffed bear cat to the Bagley's. Now, what's your wonderful news? <laughs> we just lost $2,000. Oh. Oh, I think my news was better. <laughs> Gracie, Professor Corkendorfer will give us $2,000 for the bear cat. Give me that priority. I'll trade it back to Joe. Wait right here, Professor, and make yourself at home. Yeah, I sit right here on this nice chair. Who is so soft and comfortable. Hurry back, George. He's awfully heavy on my lap. <laughs> I've been waiting already an hour for your husband to bring the bear cat. I can't wait no longer. Oh, please, Professor, don't go. Bill, give him another cup of Maxwell House coffee. Here you are, Professor. Steaming, fragrant Maxwell House. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, sure it's wonderful. But I have had already 16 cups. <laughs> I love that Maxwell House coffee, but the donuts are very tough. Donuts? What donuts? The ones here on the table. Those are my napkin rings. <laughs> I wonder they didn't dump so good. <laughs> well, we'll make up for the donuts. Tracy, put on the coffee pot and make the professor another 16 cups of Maxwell House. Another 16 cups I couldn't drink. You better just make me 15 cups. <laughs> oh, 
all right. And while I'm doing that, you can be making out the check for $2,000. No, maybe I better shouldn't. What if I write a check for $2,000 and he don't bring back the beer cart? Well, you've still gotten your money's worth, Professor. Sixteen cups of Maxwell House coffee are worth $2,000 of anybody's money. It's a superb blend. In Maxwell House, they put Manizales, Medellins, and Bucaramangas. They put them there. I find them. I got ice like a hog. <laughs> no, you don't see them, Professor. You only taste them. And what a flavor they give us. Oh, yeah, it's good coffee. But I come here to buy a stuffed bear cat. A, a stuffed bear cat? Sure. And it's got a raccoon tail yet. <laughs> Somebody crossed a bear, a cat, and a raccoon. And then they stuffed it. For this weird creature, I pay $2,000. Oh, oh, this is terrible. Oh, I hate to have George come home. Well, why, Gracie? If you pay $2,000 for a weird creature, have George stuff. <laughs> Professor, there's, there's been a terrible mistake. Well, I gave, I gave Joe the priority slip and got the bag. I had to push it seven blocks. The darn thing died. It just died? <laughs> they stuffed it while it was alive? <laughs> Stuffed it? George, the professor only wanted the bear cat because he thought it was a stuffed animal. Oh, no. I've lost the priority in $2,000. I, I, oh. Gracie. Gracie, he's fainted. Bring me some ice and spirits of ammonia. Oh, well, that's fine. George is fainted and you want to mix yourself a drink. <laughs> huh? Take care of him, Bill. I've got things to do. I got him into this mess and I'll get him out. After a sleepless night, George received a surprise visit early the next morning from Joe Bagley. You got a nerve coming here, Bagley. George, old pal, I'm here to apologize. I've come to slap you on the back and bury the hatchet. Mm. Here's your new car priority, and I'm taking the stuff. Joe, I misjudged you. You're a real gentleman. That's me, gentleman Joe. <laughs> so long, George. So long, Joe. Gracie. Gracie. Well, what is it, dear? Bagley just gave me our priority and took back the stunt. Oh, I'll bet this ad in the morning paper had something to do with it. What ad? Oh, I'll read it to you. Movie Studio will pay $3,000 for 1918 Steph Fair Cat for use in pictures. <laughs> oh, Bagley rooked me again. No, he didn't, George. I put that ad in the paper. <laughs> you mean you put it in so Bagley would... Uh-huh. Gracie, you're a genius. Yeah, and I'm smart, too. <laughs> now, I've already gone to the automobile agency and made a deal with them. A deal? Yeah. Now you'll only have to pay $1,750. For the new car? No, we're just getting the extras. The garbage disposal unit, the mix master, the Venetian car. Join us again next Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Meredith Wilson, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Toby Reed. Do you like good things the easy way? Then get instant Maxwell House coffee. So good. So good. True coffee flavor and fragrance because instant Maxwell House is not a so-called coffee product. It's all pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form. I'm so easy. So easy. Instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup. No fuss, no muss, no bother. Today, try Instant Maxwell House. Instantly good to the last drop. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck. From the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show is written by Keith Fowler and Paul Henning. And now, stay tuned in for Noah Webster Says, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.